If you've been using OpenAI assistance in a real world use case, then you'll appreciate how easy it is and how convenient it makes it to use some advanced AI features for conversational AI. You probably also are aware of some of the limitations. For example, it can be really expensive and it can be kind of slow. Also, there are some hard limits on how files and knowledge base information is stored within each assistant, which makes it really awkward to scale it up to many of your users. Well, I'm happy to say that OpenAI has gone and fixed a whole bunch of these issues with their V2 release. And while you can read the announcement and the release notes on their website, what I'm going to be walking you through today is why that matters and what it means for you as someone who's spending money on this thing. So without further ado, let's dig right into it. So the changes made have benefits in three categories. So in some scenarios, it is cheaper to run the assistant. The responses that it gives are of better quality and it is faster to get your responses. And all of these three things are enabled by additional layers of control that they've enabled for you as the developer to be able to program this thing. Before understanding what's new, you have to understand what was there before. So let's take a look at that together. So in the V1 version of assistance, you start off by creating an assistant and giving it a system prompt, such as you are my personal finance bot, uh, given these files, please help me plan for my retirement or something like that. And you can upload a bunch of files to this assistant, which it then goes and slices up and makes them ready to be retrieved in relevant contexts as you're having conversations with it. In order to have a conversation, you start a thread, you can put a user message and then start a run which then goes and calls any tools that need to be called. For example, using the code interpreter to process the Excel file that you uploaded. And it creates a message, an assistant message, and puts it on the thread. So that's how things used to work. Vector stores that were storing the files that you uploaded or chunks of the content of those files were associated with an assistant. So if you wanted one for finance and one for legal, you would have to have two separate assistants. You also were limited to only 20 files per assistant. So if you wanted to have an assistant per user and they had more than 20 files, too bad, so sad. You'd have to do some kind of workaround to make that work. So now in the V2 version of the assistance, they've gone and separated that vector store into its own object that you can interact with. So you can create different knowledge bases, different vector stores for different functions of your organization. And you're no longer limited to 20 files per vector store. You can upload up to 10,000 files. That's 500 times more than before. And these vector stores are no longer only associated with the assistant. You can actually associate a different vector store to a different thread. So you can have conversations in a particular context pulling information and interacting with information from a specific vector store. So which buckets does this fall under in the grand scheme of things? Control, cost reduction, because you have to make less assistance to do your thing, and higher quality responses, because you will have specific information for specific conversations. But that is not all. They've also vastly improved how this information is retrieved from these systems. Let's take a look at V1 to see what they were doing before. In V1, when you uploaded a document, it implicitly stored it in a vector store and you didn't have direct access to interact with that vector store. So when you uploaded a long document, that whole thing doesn't fit into a prompt. So what it would have to do is go make little chunks of text out of that document and then retrieve the relevant pieces when you ask a question that matches that chunk in some way. 
So what does that look like end to end in V1? Let's say you're making some kind of health research bot and you've uploaded a bunch of files uh, about research papers for some health conditions. So if the user asked the question like, what are the treatment options for diabetes? It would go to the underlying vector store and retrieve the relevant chunks. So here it returned three. This is that K parameter when they say like top K from the vector store there in this case the k is three and then it would pass that to the underlying llm like chat gpt with a prompt like this so answer the quest user's question using the provided context here's the user's question and here's the context and the context has additional metadata like what file did it come from and stuff like that so it could give those annotations in open ai assistance v2 this has been supercharged so when you ask what are the treatment options for diabetes and heart disease before in v1 it would have taken that sentence and tried to find all of the chunks that matter that sentence but you can imagine that this question can get pretty complex and the user can actually ask like four different types of questions and finding the relevant chunks to those four questions is kind of diluting that similarity matching algorithm so what they do in v2 is actually really cool they rewrite your query your prompt to be more specific so it can grab more relevant documents so that top prompt might be rewritten to research and scientific papers on diabetes treatment and management and the second part for heart disease might be research on clinical protocols for heart disease management so then they send this off to the vector store in parallel and it gets back a whole bunch of documents for each of those queries after that they might want to get a whole bunch of relevant documents with like a large K, like 20 or 100 even. And then they make sure that those returned elements are actually relevant to the question you originally asked. So they then have this re-rank step where they go and rank those chunks based on how relevant it is to your query and they return the top k of those return chunks so what this allows is for having a large and wide net at the top where you grab all the potentially relevant documents and then you grab the most relevant documents because if you just stuff a hundred chunks into your prompt you're going to be paying a lot of money if you forgot you're paying for input tokens and output tokens, right? So your input tokens are gonna be really large and you're gonna pay for it, right? But this ensures that you sort of get the best of both worlds. And finally, it will, same as before, grab those and put that in the final prompt to the LLM, which is here's the question and here's the context. So what does this mean for you? It means that your answers will be of higher quality as in more relevant. And because of that parallel querying, it may also be faster. And you will definitely pay less because you don't have to stuff the prompt with all the relevant context, but only the top few most relevant. Now note that this only applies if you're using the actual knowledge base feature and you're uploading files. If you're stuffing your system prompt with like a thousand paragraphs, that's still gonna cost you a lot of money, right? So this is for grabbing knowledge on the fly as you're having a conversation. Speaking of prompt stuffing for your system prompt, why do people end up doing that in the first place? Well, it's because they're trying to get the LLM to behave in a certain way and the base training that OpenAI has provided doesn't allow for that. So you have to give a huge set of instructions that it should follow to respond to different scenarios. Well, one thing that's always been done when you have stuff that doesn't fit into a prompt and you're trying to control how the LLM responds is fine tuning. If you weren't aware, you can actually go on the OpenAI website and you can fine tune a GPT 3.5 model to respond how you like it. You just give it a whole bunch of examples. Like if someone asks to summarize this, here's what a summary looks like. Or if they like, give you a company description, here's if they're B2B or B2C. Like you can fine tune how it responds to anything based on a bunch of examples that you give it through a fine tuning process. 
Well, that wasn't available to you in Assistance API, but now they've added the ability to fine tune the GPT 3.5 Turbo model, which is super fast and a lot cheaper than GPT-4 for your specific use case. And now you can use this in assistance. Previously, you couldn't. You had to use the base GPT-3.5 or GPT-4. So if you want it faster and cheaper, you went with 3.5, but then the quality suffered. But now you get the best of both worlds if you're willing to spend some time to put together a training set for fine tuning for that model. So this falls in the cost plus quality bucket. One of the other reasons that assistants were so expensive to run in V1 was that as this thread keeps growing, it's essentially adding more and more and more and more information to then stuff into a prompt to give to the LLM. And so you're using a lot of input tokens and the cost just keeps growing as the thread gets longer. But now they've added the ability to put a cap on how much context you want to include in each of those threads as it's going back to the assistant. So that's one way that you're going to be able to save money just by switching to the V2 and leveraging that option. Another thing that's sort of neat is as these conversations get longer, you might want to store them and load them. Ideally, you'd want like a user that's coming back to have a conversation with your assistant to just resume from where they left off without passing the context of like three months of conversation history to the bot because that'll be very expensive. So what they've allowed you to do now is predefine the messages before starting to interact with the assistant. So you can preload some user messages and some assistant messages back and forth that are hidden before starting the conversation. So a way you might use this is to provide a summary of key facts that have been discussed so far or key decisions that have been made or whatever is relevant to your use case in that uh, sort of pre-conversation context as user and assistant messages to sort of simulate the conversation that has happened so far before continuing to have discussions with the bot. I thought that was a pretty cool low level control mechanism that advanced bots are certainly going to leverage. Again, by adding this layer of control, they're allowing you to even further optimize the cost of running a high quality assistant. Now there is one final feature I know is going to be super popular with everyone because almost every AI consulting client that I've worked with that's using assistance has asked me about this. And it makes a huge difference in the end user experience. What am I talking about? Well, when you're using ChatGPT, you just type in your prompt and you get a streaming response. That's super important for the user experience because the user can start reading immediately. But previously with assistance, you had to wait for that entire paragraph to be generated before getting your answer. So when using off the shelf tools like BotPress or VoiceFlow or coding your own uh, assistant, there was no option to stream the responses. That made for a really suboptimal experience, especially when everyone was getting used to streaming responses. Well, with the V2 release, they have now provided streaming endpoints, as well as integrating that into their Node.js and Python SDKs. So what you're going to see is a lot of these off the shelf tools that leverage assistance are finally going to be able to stream the responses back to you. Well, that pretty much covers what I wanted to talk about. There are some other things around tool calling that you may be interested in. If you're doing that kind of thing, check out the docs on the OpenAI website. But for now, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to ask a question in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. And if you're looking for something a little bit more involved and need some guidance implementing AI for your business, check out the description. We're here to help. I'd be happy to chat with you. My name is Borna and I'll see you in the next one.